Hello and welcome to the first short PowerPoint video. This one is regarding annotating and this is going to be about having a conversation with your text. Now I am not going to see your textbook. This is an online course, but I want to give you this tool because it will help you retain the information that you've read. It will help you engage in what we learn in class and on the discussion board. And it will also help you just become a better reader and writer. So let's go over what annotating is and how to do it. The steps to annotating are probably things that you are already doing. Most of you probably already use a highlighter, a pencil, or a pen as you're reading. Um, this is just a really active way of reading. It's instead of being passive and just reading the entire, let's say I gave you 15 pages to read and you just go through from page 1 and read all the way through page 15. Probably some of you are going to end up reading the first paragraph over and over and over again before you get into what you've read. I know this happens to me, but if you become an active reader and suddenly you and your pencil are having a conversation with what you've read, you become uh, much more engaged in what you're reading. So the first step, of course, is to have a pencil or pen in your hand. Read the first and last paragraphs, then the topic sentences of the material that you're about to read. And what this does is help prepare you for what the author is trying to say, what the author's purpose is, and perhaps the tone of the piece um, by doing this brief overview of, re of what you're going to read. Then you'll start at the beginning and you'll be read very slowly. As you read, Mark places that interest you, confuse you, surprise you, contradict your own opinion, and that are important to you. Now when I say mark, that means you can use a highlighter, you can, use a, you can put an asterisk or a star next to areas that interest you, or any one of these areas listed here. Um, you can mark it however you like. We haven't quite gotten to annotating. This is the steps leading up to annotating. But marking those areas will remind you as a reader to go back to it later and look at it again and, and remember why you highlighted it in the first place. Further ideas for annotating are to underline, uh, star, highlight the box, write brief comments in the margins. This is a step that's often left out. The other thing is that you, uh, you want to make observations about what's being said or done. Uh, what you're reminded of. You can use personal experience when you're when you're reading something. If it reminds you of, of a place or or certain people, you can put that in the margins as well. It will help you retain the material that you've read. Um, any questions you have, ideas that occur to you, things that you agree or disagree with, um, especially for this class, we'll be making a lot of arguments about what we read. Any connections you're making to another text you've read or any connections you're making within your life, um, summary comments. Sometimes this is helpful, especially if you have a hard time retaining information. You can write a summary of what that paragraph was about. Um, identify things, themes that are being developed and any literary devices being used. So for example, if you look at this, um, this is from a Romeo and Juliet, and you notice that the how, 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 uh, the person marked an arrow and wrote repetition, shows how angry he is. Um, the word cop logic, chop logic, choppy logic doesn't make any sense. Um, on the side there with the, with the um, arrows, he mimics her, sees her previous lines. And for the words the writer doesn't know, they've circled them and written the definition. Um, they've circled in parts that are interesting. They put stars by areas that catch their attention. And all along the left-hand side, you see small written notes that that are the author's opinions, their sort of um, take on what they've just read. This is what an annotated page should look like. Now, I've only taken a, a small section of this. How much or how little you do is really up to you. So what do you annotate when you write? Well, the f I haven't listed this here, but the first thing to do is to go through what speaks to you as you're reading the page. Um, some common areas that people annotate are themes, character changes or development, literary devices such as metaphors or similes, any symbols that they see that might represent something else, figurative language, and basically the underlying question here is, is the language meant to be literal or figurative? And um, I, like to, I like to annotate author's purpose. Why did she or he choose to include a particular passage, style, etc.? Um, sometimes I think this can help us as readers understand 
why the the writer has written what they've read, what we are, what we as readers are supposed to take out of it. So remember these things as you are annotating. And um, like I said, I don't see this, but um, I probably will see the effect of it in in what you write for our class. If you have any questions, just send me an email.